Hey guys, welcome back. I got a real treat for you today. Not only is this an Aston Martin DBX, but this is the first Aston Martin on this channel. So give it up for the 2021 DBX. I gotta be honest with you, I wish the rest of the car looked as nice as the front end. I mean, take a look at this, this is sexy. The side and the rear of this car honestly looks like a Kia. I'm honestly not sure if this is the main key or just the valet key, but Whatever this one is, it feels ultra cheap. It feels super lightweight and uh, not at all nice like the uh, crystal key on the older Astons. Again, I hope this is just the valet key because this is way too cheap. I could be wrong, but I get the impression that they way over-engineered this door. I mean, take a look at how it works down here. The smell of leather in here is intoxicating. I can't get enough of it. Anyway, let's start the test. Only a couple little squeaks in the back seat, but the only thing I kind of noticed was when the material made a squeak, but then I pressed that area again, it didn't squeak. That just tells me the material is kind of settling because nobody else has put pressure on that part before. Twenty seven thousand miles.
And now for the button test. Just gonna pretend that didn't happen. And now for the final button. All right, guys, so I'm not gonna spend all day talking about the fit and finish. I'm gonna keep that part pretty brief. So here's what's going on. So there are a couple little creaks and rattles in here, but it's nothing major. Like I said earlier in the video, there uh, were a few squeaks that when I pressed the area a second time, they didn't squeak. And I think, again, that's because the material was settling because it was never pressed before. So that's kind of what we're dealing with in here. And then the squeakier area was this center console kind of area. And then there was, there was one annoying little squeak here on the door. Of course, I can't replicate it now. But um, yeah, overall, not super squeaky, not like a Mercedes anyway, which is ironic because this car uses some Mercedes parts bin interior bits. I'm going to get to that in a minute. Believe me. I'd say the interior was more solid than I was expecting, so I'd happily give this a 7 out of 10 for fit and finish. As far as materials go, that's where this car really, really, really shines. Let me explain. Aston Martin has always used beautiful leather and stitching in their cars historically. This one is no exception. You have real soft, gorgeous leather all over the dash, all over the door, and even on the lower parts. Truly fantastic stuff. Even the, the speakers up here and even down by the door, that's covered in leather too. Those little holes there, the perforations are leather. Pretty great stuff, guys. Speaking of stitching, I know this is going to sound weird coming from me, but I've been in like a thousand cars plus over my lifetime. This is the highest quality, thickest feeling stitching I've ever felt in my life. This stitching is fantastic. It almost feels like it's on like a, a Burberry clothing piece or something. It is super nice. A lot of cars will put in fake stitching or really thin stitching that's not color contrast. And it's like, oh, it's there. Like, you know, so does everything. No, this stitching is amazing. It's hard to put it in words without you actually being here to feel it. Gotta take my word for it. It is awesome. 
I guess the main trim in this car is leather, leather, and more leather. But we do have some bright work going on here. Speaking of which, that bright work is in fact real metal. It's not plastic BS that's painted to look like metal, like on a Mercedes or a BMW. You touch this, it's solid and cold. Not to mention the door handle itself and the paddle shifters, both very solid, cold, and very metal. The seats, as you may imagine, are real leather, of course, with the gorgeous white stitching. It's also got a couple of aluminum inserts here, and you have the Aston Martin logo stamped in the headrest. That's very nice. Both the headliner and the sun visor, not to mention the pillars, are Alcantara, but take a look at this. You have this aluminum piece right here, and then when you open it up, this one doesn't stay open like on the other side, that's a problem. But you have the aluminum trim continuing in here. It just looks so sharp. Like this is probably one of the nicest vanity mirrors I've ever seen. This is just, honestly, it's like jewelry. Now to me, the most controversial part about this car is gonna be the buttons and switch gear. A lot of it's good, some of it's bad. For those of you who are car nuts out there or uh, who are just in the business like me, you'll know that Aston Martin has some kind of contract with Daimler, aka Mercedes-Benz, to use some of their stuff. So take a look at this. From the last generation of Mercedes cars, they don't get M-Bucks like the newest stuff. They get the previous generation stuff. So this rotary dial, this... Um, turn signal stock right here, even the steering wheel adjustment stock. That's all out of a C-Class that you can buy now for $15,000. I'm not even kidding. A couple of those bits in here are pretty cheap, and not to mention this uh, big old slab. Actually, there's two big old slabs right here of the Black Piano Horror. I have no idea why they would put a material like that in a car like this. But at least it doesn't feel, it does feel solid when you kind of hit on it. It's not completely flimsy like in a, a Chevy or something. But yeah, other than that, the buttons and switch gear in this car are pretty excellent. I mean, you have these things right here. They're kind of glossy. They remind me of the black piano veneer, but it's, it's all right, I guess. The window switches themselves are just plastic. They don't feel like anything special, but then you got this little thing right here that you use to uh, adjust. This is very excellent right here, this piece. It's super tight and clicky, like in an Audi, but it feels cold because it is in fact solid metal. Very good piece right here. I'd actually give this interior a very rare nine out of 10 for materials. Only reason I'm not doing 10 out of 10 is because of the couple of Daimler buttons that are a little cheap Otherwise, this is a very nicely put together interior. Oh, also forgot to mention the glass buttons up here for your, uh, well, it's not a gear lever, but you know what I mean. These are pretty cool too, although it's a little bit annoying because you have to actually reach over here and put in some effort to put it into drive. Guess you could get over that. All right, guys, so your final score is going to be 7 out of 10 for fit and finish, 9 out of 10 for materials. Please let me know your thoughts. All right, so I did drive this car around just a little bit. I didn't go fast in it because there's nowhere really I can push this car without annoying the neighbors, if you know what I mean. But overall driving impressions, I can tell you this car is uh, very performance oriented. The steering has a nice weight and a feel to it, and it's pretty responsive off-center. Like You can very easily steer this car with not a lot of effort. You can tell this car does wake up a little bit. It's kind of quiet actually right now. And even when you're driving around 25, 30 miles per hour, the car is uh, not very loud, but I can tell that it gets louder. It's got that kind of uh, dual mode exhaust where uh, it's like on a Ferrari where you get to about four or 5,000 RPM, the valves open up and the car really wakes up sound wise. I can tell it's got one of those but yeah, it's a very good handling car. It takes corners extremely well for an SUV. As far as the overall driving experience goes, this kind of reminds me of a Porsche Macan or a Porsche Cayenne, only with a nicer interior. And uh, 
if it's anything to go by those cars, those cars drive excellently. And so does this. Although this car is depreciating quite a lot. I know these are like around 200 grand when they're new. I think this one's around 100. These cars are losing value fast. But if you can wait a couple of years, scoop up one of these for cheap, this is a lot of car for the money. At the end of the day, I am super impressed with this car. I can forgive the interior shortcomings by the rest of the nice interior and the superior driving experience. Solid car. I like it. I'd buy it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you next time. Peace.